So welcome to the last part of today's lecture. My, one of my last goals that I want to do today is kind of show you that if you have a linear transformation given by matrix multiplication A, you can change your basis so that the map that you're, the matrix M that you're using is actually a diagonal matrix. And here is the details of that. So our matrix P is if our matrix P is B1 through Bn, so these are all eigenvectors and it's invertibles, P times the B coordinate of X will always give you X, okay? Because this is how um, X is related to its B coordinate with respect to its basis. So if you go back to the chapter when we talked about the B coordinate, this, is, this formula will actually appear here. Now the matrix P is invertible, so we can move P to the other side by taking its inverse. Okay, so we'll keep put that aside. We'll need that in a second. And now let's look at this matrix M relative to, to these two bases. Okay, so I'll just write out the formula here. So we're taking our first basis L and we're writing it with respect to our basis B because normally this would have been a C, but C and B are the same in this case. So we're gonna go all the way through and we have T, B, N with respect to B, okay? And now our matrix, this is actually matrix multiplication, right? So this is A times B1 with respect to B up to A times BN with respect to B. And now this guy here, A, the A, right, is diagonalizable. Um, and what I can do now is Oh, yeah, so what I want to notice here is that I'm looking for the B coordinate, right? So A, B, 1 is the B coordinate. We're looking for the B coordinate, so I'm going to use this fact right here. So I can replace this with P inverse A, B, 1, all the way through with P inverse A, B, N. So I'm using this fact right there to do this result. And now I can pull out a P inverse in A from this. So this is the same thing as P inverse A times the matrix P B1 up to Bn. But this matrix here with the columns B1 through Bn, it's simply the matrix P, right? So this is P inverse A P, but that actually is the matrix D since A is equal to P times D P, P inverse. So the matrix M at this level that exists because of our earlier work is actually the diagonal matrix um, that's showing up in the factorization uh, in terms of the diagonalization. Okay, so here's kind of this, the big idea that you might want to take away is that if you have a linear transformation and you can diagonalize it, this linear transformation is really the same as a different linear transformation, Rn to Rn, given by a diagonal map, where that if we use the correct basis for Rn, namely the eigenvectors of A. So if you transform everything into the right basis, so I take the right point of view, then your linear transformation is actually simply given by a map by a diagonal matrix. So let me just kind of illustrate this with one further example. Uh, this matrix should look familiar because it's appeared, I think, in the last three lectures now. We have the matrix A, which is 1, 0, 6, negative 1, and here's the factorization or the diagonalization. Then normally, this vector, this map would take a vector x and map it over to A times x. Instead, now what we can do is we can take x and map it down to its B coordinate. And the way that you can do that, in, the way to find this value is to take P inverse times X. Okay, so this is actually just using this fact right here. Then we can take this vector and then we multiply it by the diagonal matrix. So we have D times X B. All right, so, and in this case here, I might as well write out what that is. That's the same thing as doing 1, 0, 0, minus 1 of the vector x, b. 
And the what the theorem and all of our work is doing here is saying that this is the same thing as going P inverse A X, right? Because this will give me the the B coordinate of A X. So this map commutes. Basically, if you can go this way or you can go this way, the thing is if you use this map, then moving across is just given by a diagonal map. So there are a lot of things in today's lecture. Uh, one of the big things is we learned about the matrix M relative to a basis B and C, and we learned about uh, how diagonalization kind of shows up in a linear transformation. In particular, it shows up if you take the right type of basis. So there's a lot of content in today's lecture. The next lecture, we're going to take a different shift of gears and we're going to look at complex numbers. We'll take a little one last lecture break from matrices. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's lecture and I'll see you at the next one.